Let's talk about the principles of appraisal because they are absolutely fundamental to your being able to master this topic and also pass the exam the first time. Highest and best use is the first one we will discuss. And when an appraiser is looking at a piece of property, he has to determine several things. First of all, is the use that the individuals that are ordering the appraisal have in mind, is it legal? Is it possible considering the physical limitations? And of all the possibilities that exist, is this the use which will give the highest return now and in the future? This is usually the first principle that an appraiser looks at, particularly when you're talking about a piece of raw dirt, because the highest and best use could change the value of that dirt remarkably, depending on what the use might be for that particular piece of property. The principle of substitution is the foundational principle that all appraisers use and that the appraised value, fair market value, this is where it comes from. It's that value which states that no prudent person would pay more than that for something than they have to. In other words, people go out and do comparison shopping. They look at more than one property. And for the utility that they're going to get out of that property, is this the best deal? That's the principle of substitution. It's comparison shopping. Principle of conformity. If you've got a property that's in a neighborhood that is upscale homes, but this particular property has a modular or maybe a mobile home on a permanent foundation set on it, that creates a situation where you have a disparity of properties in an area. Appraisers will call that a non-homogenic neighborhood. The property value will either be helped or it will be pulled back and hindered depending if it was overbuilt or underbuilt for the area. If the property is the smallest home in the neighborhood, then it's going to be pulled up in value. That's called the principle of progression. But if the property is the largest home in an area, maybe twice the size of neighboring properties, it's going to be pulled down in value. That's the principle of regression. So within this concept of conformity, there's two other terms that are very important. Progression, when it's pulled up by neighboring properties, and regression, when it's pulled down by the neighboring properties. Principle of contribution says that every element of a home must contribute more than what it costs to put that element in. For example, if you have a home with a $35,000 well, costs 35000 to put into play, it doesn't make that property automatically worth $35,000 more. There could be a neighboring property where the well only costs $20,000 to put in. Well, each of these properties have a sufficient well. One just had to drill a little deeper than the other. So where you don't get dollars back for the improvements you put into a property, you're violating the principle of contribution. But if you put something into a home, it costs you $5,000 to put in this extra spiffy kitchen above standard, well, that's great. If you can get the $5,000 back plus, then you're in sync with the principle of contribution. Neighborhoods tend to go through a cycle. It's a cycle of change. And what happens is during the formation of a neighborhood, when there's a lot of new construction and things happening, that's the growth or integration stage. Then after a while, it kind of comes to an equilibrium point where the prices really aren't going up, but they're really not going down either. And then usually neighborhoods go through a disintegration stage. The disintegration stage can be caused by a number of different things. It could just be the properties have gotten old. But on the other hand, if this is a highly desirable neighborhood, sometimes neighborhoods don't go through the disintegration stage in the same way that other neighborhoods may. But that's the cycle. Growth or integration, equilibrium, and then disintegration. The appraisal principle of anticipation. If there's a general feeling in the area that, hey, a new mall is going in on the west side of town, and that's going to push properties way up in value, particularly the little commercial pieces contiguous or adjacent to that. The mall may not have even been started yet, but if the word's out, the principle of anticipation kicks in. And what happens is that people are willing to pay more for that, not because anything's happened yet, but they all believe it will happen. It also works the opposite direction. 
If people think a neighborhood or a property is in disintegration, they may not be willing to pay as much for it because even though it hasn't disintegrated yet, uh, I don't know, that neighborhood is on the fall. So, you know, we don't want to jump in there and pay a high price and then be left with that property later that's worth a lot less. So anticipation, if they have a positive feeling about something, it can tend to push prices up. Anticipation, if they have a negative feeling, it pushes prices down. The principle of competition says that excessive profits lead to ruinous competition. If everyone in town is building small starter homes and they're doing really well and making money, maybe twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a house, all of a sudden more builders come in. Even national builders might come into an area and start punching those same type of properties out and then the profit margins begin to fall. So the principle of competition says that excessive profits leads to ruinous competition. And the principle of balance. The principle of balance says that there's several factors, dimensions, which control production. Labor, capital, management, and land. And when you have those all in sync, you have the best situation going for you. If you have the capital, you have the management team, and you have the land, but you can't find anyone to build the houses for you, such as you can't find the labor. You can't even find the labor to push the dirt, to put the subdivision in. Well, that's a real fast market, isn't it? But it's not the best situation because even though you're ready to go, you can't find anyone to build the houses. Or if you have the labor ready to go, you have the capital ready to go, but you can't find any land to put this on, then that's not going to work either. So when all those are in balance, then you have the best situation going for you.